Oh, thank you. I'm cold. Miriam has taken <laughs> yeah. you know, a swipe at me, but yeah, I would warm up with my hot tea. And then I want to say that I'm particularly proud of the Super Falcons. You know, they lost uh, against England, but it was a good fight. Yeah. You know, they pulled through. They did well. And the country is, the whole country is proud of you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Our chipping, <laughs> our tig tigress. The tigress. The tigress. The tigress. Also, um, they just product in the papers, Avi. Mm. Basketball yeah. team. The basketball yeah. team. Because, you know, every, when I was a teenager, everybody just looked at me and felt like, you should play basketball. Same. You play everybody. You know, once you God help you. Be like tall. This, <laughs> you like so I never got to play, but I was so happy to see, man, those girls at all. That wasn't my banter. Mm -hmm. As it is, I have gotten such an amazing feedback from Diary of an Ejebu Girl. Huh. And, yes, yeah, I love... Yes, Diary of yes, yes. I just... Um, posted it for and the first time with yesterday. It? You started it? Oh, yeah. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fantastic. I, I just feel that Ijebus gets a lot of bad rap and there's a lot of good Ijebu ah, people. So, um, and I've always spoken about my Ijebu Ijebu, so I just felt, why don't I just make it a series and use it to teach financial principles and balance life, yeah. life or, um, getting being prudent, balancing I life. I love so, it. So you're starting a community. Yeah. That's yeah. beautiful. So, well done. And the Jebu people were just typing. Hey. Oh, I'm so happy to be Jebu. I'm like, okay, interesting. <laughs> Let's do this. My <laughs> mother-in-law was Ijebu. <laughs> and two things I know her for, she's resourceful, financially so, and a fashion killer. Mm. <laughs> <Yeah>. My aunt <laughs> was Ijebu. My aunt, she's a oh, she Jebu. Is. oh my goodness. I mean, I learned to love her, but it's a story for another day. But How you I learned doing? quite a bit. I'm doing well. You are going to talk about Fuja family. Oh yeah, I got my wolf. Oh, no, no, your inheritance. inheritance. Ah. You know, I keep talking about it. That, you know, I think the Fuja family is such a family that should be studied. Mm. And I, I mean, such an amazing big family. Um, yesterday, I got an alert from my, from mm -hmm. my inheritance. You know, my grandfather died in 1976. The IRA of Lagos, um, Alaji Teslim uh, Fuja. He died in 1976. I was born in 1980. I never met the guy. He didn't know when I was conceived. Yet, <laughs> 47 years later, I'm still receiving money Every year. from the estate. I mean, I was like, when I got the alert, I'm like, ah. This is some serious <laughs> conversation we need to have about inher wealth. inheritance, transgenerational wealth. Mm. You know, I mean, no matter what, I mean, my mother got something and now her children are getting something. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah, my kids, will, I mean, it's just no amazing. You. <laughs> it's amazing. So, I mean, I'm really proud to be a descendant of the mm. Fuja family and I'm so grateful that, um, um, that I'm part of that. So, that's it. Let's go on a quick Lesson break. Lesson to learn. Yeah, mm. God bless you, uh, you know. <laughs> Let's go on a break. When we come back... Look at the front pages of the paper. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.
Thanks for staying with us. We're going to start with the nation. Security clearance delays El Rufai Okotete Danladi. FBN shares seek SEC intervention in takeover bid. ECOWAS plans review of Niger Junta position. WIAC withdraws candidates' results from eight states. I sold jobs for 1.5 million at federal agency, says ex worker. No plot to impeach Shabu, says Obaseki. And um, federal government uncovers 44 multiple taxes in bills. Okay, which story are we starting with? Okay, I have um, West Africa Examination Council. That's why it has withheld the West African Senior School Certificate Examination results of candidates from eight states. Um, the YX head of the Nigeria National Office, Mr. Patrick Arrea, Arrea described Zamfara and Niger states as chronic debtors. He also said that Zamfara did not present candidates for this year's examination. He didn't give details on all the other on the other states, that the six states, but he said that those ones were going to pay. He says about eight states were owing Wayek, but he won't mention the others because they are going to pay. However, Zamfara and Niger are the biggest debtors. Zamfara did not present any candidates also gave us a breakdown on the number of students that registered this year. He said 1,621,884 candidates registered um, from over 20,000 recognized secondary school, but um, just 1,613,733 candidates sat for the examination. He said about 84.33% of them obtained credit and above in a minimum of five um, subjects. Other results also were withheld for exam or practices and he said that um, they will continue to sanction cases of exam or practice advising parents to stop funding the so-called expo that's the illegal where you illegally get those um question papers outside the exam hall for your children okay so let's talk about the drama going on in the uh, federal character commission so the former staff member of the fcc harun okolo yesterday admitted before the House of Representatives Committee, the Ad Hoc Committee of the House of Representatives, um, investigating job racketeering. Um, and he admitted that he served uh, as a front for collecting money from job seekers on behalf of the Commission's chairman. Harina said that he collected between 1 million and 1.5 million from 25 job seekers who sought employment in the Commission. But the chairman, uh, Muiba Dankaka, swore by the Holy Quran that she never collected any money from Kolo. The agency chairman had said she had never asked the staff member to collect money from any job seeker. So she said that, um, according to her, she, was, she swore by the Quran, said that if I have ever collected, ever collected money or asked anybody to collect money on my behalf, may God destroy all that she has worked for. Mm. But Kolo, who told the hardcore committee, said that he earns 110,000 naira per month. However, he couldn't defend why 38 million naira was found in his personal account. And he kept saying that he collected the money and he handed it over to take it to her house to deliver to her. But she is saying that that has never happened. So I guess the investigation is ongoing and we'll see where that takes place. Wow. All right. Wow. I'd like to take the story that says no plot to impeach Shabo, says Obaseke. So um, the, there's still a power tussle going on between the governor of Edo State and his deputy and this is stemming from um, the secession uh, crisis that has hit the people's democratic uh, party in Edo state so the governor claims that he doesn't know that his deputy has an intention to run for the governorship uh, seat in 2024 meanwhile the deputy is saying that he's been witch hunted because he does not He's been witch hunted and he doesn't have the support of the governor for whatever reason. And uh, the governor also, while addressing a um, journalist, he said that the move by the deputy governor to go to the uh, federal high court to get an injunction against impeaching him was just a preemptive uh, move because nobody planned to impeach him based on his intentions to become a governor. Rather, they were discussing why he would want to move to APC instead of, you know, staying with the PDP. So the Afemai people, that's where they are bought from, are insisting that uh, the, they have to continue with the zoning of uh, the governorship uh, seats, that it doesn't have to be from 
the governors do not have to come yeah. from Edo uh, West. They have to switch it to Edo North as well. So that part also is going on, and then we just have to keep our fingers crossed to see how right. that unfolds. Yeah, so um, <laughs> our Senate have taken a break from <clears throat> going through nominees. They've cleared 45 of the um, nominees that were sent out of the 48 sent, three were outstanding. So we have the former governor, El Rufai. We have Dan Ladi and Okotete. I was really looking forward to listening to Okotete's um, um, session when she gets to be questioned by the assembly, um, but that couldn't happen. And this is because they were still awaiting security screening on both the former governor as well as Okotete. While the, um, their security clearance, rather not security screening, their security clearance was still pending. And there is a pending case that needs to be confirmed, which is that Nalady is not allowed to take any political position over a period of time. Then there are some petitions that were um, made against El Rufai as well as Okotete. And so based on all of that, they have paused um, screening of nominees for ministerial position up until 26th of September when they resume from their the break. They've taken over, I think it's about six weeks break that they've taken. They were supposed to take the break earlier, um, but they didn't take the break so they can do the screening. So 45 have been approved to be ministers within the country and they were waiting to hear what will happen from September 26th when they resume mm. at the Senate. All right, moving on quickly now to the punch. FG withdraws contempt suit against Labour NLC may suspend strike. Jack Conde received, no, conceived Banana Island allocated no plot to himself, says son. Mm. Mob attacks cop as boss crushes motorists on BRT lane. FBN shareholders protest AGM suspension demand regulators intervention. Um, Nigeria, Niger, mega rail, mega rail project threatened. Over 1,000 trucks trapped. Senate refuses to confirm El Rufai, Dan Ladif, and the female nominee. And Obaseki dismisses impeachment plot, says Sheibu planning APC defection. Okay, let me talk about the, um, the maiden edition of Alaji, um, late Alaji Latif Jakonde. Um, yesterday happened, and the, the, quite a number of governors were present. The Lagos State Governor was represented by his deputy, um, Dr. Um, Obafemi Hamzat. His son, Sheyi, was speaking at the event uh, that took place at um, Sheraton Hotel Ikeja, and he was saying that um, they were reviewing the lecture by Latif Jakonde, the man, his journalism, his politics, and was organized by the Guild, Nigerian Guild of Editors. Interestingly, he was actually the very first um, chairman of the NDE, Wow. NGE, the Nigerian, because he was a journalist. He was the first president Thank of you. the NGE who served and also served later as governor. But um, Sheyi was say, saying that his father, who actually started, um, conceptualized the idea of Banana Island, started even with the filling of, of Banana Island, never wow. allocated any land to himself or his family. People used to wonder, does he even have a wife or children? You know, he never allocated anything to himself. But that, 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 it and was integrity. known for being a very... Let's what the paper said now. Ah, sorry. <laughs> so the papers, well, she also, he also mentioned that he wanted the Lagos State Government to consider renaming Lasso after his father, Jack Conde, because according to him, um, the, he was the one that actually... Um, um, he was, he was, he was his, the institution was his brainchild, and he, I think they believe that he deserved to be named, um, to be given that name after him. Yes. I agree. Okay. Um, but I also feel like um, Jaconde is known for his integrity and his visionary stance with development within Lagos. You know, we credit um, our president for 1999 till now, but we should also credit Jaconde for the progress Lagos had from um, his time till mm -hmm. now as well. He wanted to do Blue Reel back All right. then. Let's go on a quick break. When we return, we continue with our review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Come closer. A little bit more. Perfect. I have exciting news for you. You asked for it and you got it. Your favorite breakfast show, Your View, will be going to two hours. We're going to have in-depth analysis of the newspaper review and more conversations on the hot topics. The ladies of your view and I will be staring up our guests to get in depth into all the various topics. And you, our viewers, will have the opportunity to call in and share your views. After all, it's your view. Join us on your view, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. for a fantastic conversation. Hmm. So, 
Have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues, and last but not the least, a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate. And yes, you guessed it, women. So, if you catch the drift, then you're on to something. We will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities, right here within this beautiful cocktail we call the Black Table. Hmm, so, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about. Thanks for staying with us. We're still reviewing Punch. Any other story? Yes, I have um, this story that says a mob on Monday descended on a police officer. Hmm. Um, after he had um, allegedly pushed a man called Yusuf onto a, like a BRT lane and uh, uh, had pushed him and then a BRT bus came and crushed this person. Mm -hmm. So um, eyewitnesses are alleging that um, this Yusuf was, was um, police, uh, policemen were trying to extort Yusuf and in the course of doing that, they pushed him out and the bus came and crushed him. Ouch. And he fell. Although eyewitnesses also say that he didn't die, but he had a cut on his arm and he was bleeding. He laid down almost lifeless on the ground. And so, according to eyewitnesses, they said that the police was trying to escape and they also surrounded him, beat him up as well. And um, uh, eventually, other police officers came and rescued their person and people also were trying to help the other one. But the police command is saying that that's not what happened. That the policeman and Mr. Yusuf are both victims of an accident. They said this BRT bus was the one that was illegal, driving illegally on the lane and he hit both of them. But eyewitnesses account is saying something different. So that's what we have on that matter. Okay. okay. But they've both been rushed to the hospital. Right. Taken okay. to the hospital. I have the Niger story. Nigeria, Niger mega rail project threatened and this is stemming from the declining diplomatic ties between Nigeria and Niger so we have over 1,000 trucks stuck at the Niger Nigeria border you know <coughs> and those trucks are carrying over thoughts that's uh, projects or w when they launched that project it came with a lot of backlash because yeah. people do not understand why we would want to build a rail to connect Niger in the first instance. But then the president made a um, statement saying that they just found oil and it's better for them to, you know, to transport it through Nigeria instead of um, Benin. And then the project actually commenced. Unfortunately, because of these um, issues that are happening between Nigeria and uh, Niger, the projects have now been halted. And um, the contractor is saying that they have started work and they have employed over 300 um, uh, employees. Uh, they've employed over 300 cool? Nigerians. Exactly. And, right. you know, they are really suffering the backlash of the Cold War between both right. countries. Okay. So the um, labor will not be going on strike. So, you know, Nigerian labor, they said they were going to go on strike on the 14th of August based on the fact that the federal government was taking them to court to sue them for contempt of the court order. And... When they threatened the strike, the government has withdrawn the, the contempt case in court and now they have backed out from, um, they are saying they will back, back out from going on strike. So the reason for the contempt case was because they had already gone to the National um, Industrial Court that labor shouldn't have gone on that protest on Wednesday. 
But Labour said, based on their lawyer, um, the advice. advice that they went ahead with it, and that was why they were going to be sued um, on content. And right now, I'm happy that we're actually talking to one another and are not going to bring the entire economy <sighs> grinding into a halt just because we want to prove a point. We're hoping that we put the interest of Nigerians above personal agenda. Thank you. Daily Sun, Niger Ekwa's latest perfect action plan. Akpabio promises to take up the Southeast case for appointment of more ministers. FG to remove taxes on tomatoes, raw food items soon, says JTB chairman. Abiola persuaded my father to join Abacha's government, says Jack and his son. Mob beats policeman over death, death of man crushed by BRT. Waik withholds Wasi results of eight states over debt. Seplat Energy's gas revenue grows to $63.7 million. Tinubu Atiku hail Falcon's performance against England. Okay, <clears throat> which story are we? I uh, will take federal government to remove taxes on tomatoes, raw foods items soon. So we have uh, Mr. Mohamed Nami, that's the chairman for the Joint Tax Board. He's also the executive chairman of FIRS and um, at the harmonization and codification of taxes at national and subnational levels. Keys to achieving tax friendly environment in Nigeria, Abuja meeting. That's the 153rd JTB meeting. He said that um, um, ending taxation on non taxable uh, um, items was part of the proposed tax reforms by this administration. Um, he said that we do not want goods and services that are not taxable to be taxed for the informal sector. Um, he also said that we'll have an enumeration in the sector to ensure that those that are trading goods like tomatoes, raw food items are not made to pay taxes. Those that are not making up to 25 million naira will not be allowed to pay company tax or value-added tax. Um, he's also said that we're quite lucky that this new administration from the very first day has indicated interest in eliminating multiple taxations. And the implication is that what we call informal taxes, black taxes, or whatever name it is called, either the federal, state, or local government levels, will be eliminated. Um, he says the harmonization process will also reduce the number of taxes, block leakages, as well as boost revenue generation. So, I mean, this is good news, especially for the informal sector. You know, that's what we cry about all the time. You're taxed for different things at different, you know, different points. And then you're not, and I also like the fact that if you're not making up to 25 million, you'll not be expected to pay company tax or value-added tax. Yeah. That's good. All right, so the Senate president yesterday, after the... Um, the session they had um, was able to assure 14 members of the, uh, of the senators from the southeast zone that he will speak to the president concerning the, um, the, the balance, the need to balance the geopolitical representation in the ministerial appointments. They raised that motion. Um, according to the paper, the Senate president who spoke at the end of the plenary or was reacting to a motion step down in the order paper, the motion tagged urgent needs to balance geopolitical representation in the, in the ministerial appointment and it was sponsored by, by um, Tony Nwoye and 14 other senators from the Southeast geopolitical zone and he assured them that he would discuss it with the president. I don't know what, that, what, that, what that's going to mean because we currently have 48. Are they going to add more or are we going to remove some more? I mean, that's, that's an interesting um, conversation to have. Okay, let's move on quickly now. We, um, on. Um, Wiki. Wiki had already written... A letter. You know that we know that we, um, as a former governor, former governor of, Rivers. of River State is a PDP member and now is is accepted to serve as a minister as a minister in an APC government. So he's written he had written the letter even before going for his nomination that he was going to let PDP know that he has accepted to serve in this government because he believes in collaboration and working together for the growth of Nigeria and he believes that he would continue to remain a card carrying. PDP member <laughs> while he intends to serve as an APC. APC in the APC government. Well, he's seven... he's not stepping down. That's the, he wanted that clarification yeah. out and he informed the PDP of his intention yeah. to serve. And At that level, and we are really that. serving Nigeria. Yeah. So, yeah. Vanguard, Minister, Senate stops El Rafai, Okutete, and Dan Ladi. No plot to impeach Deputy Governor, says Obaseki. Biafra, sits at home, is dead, buried, says Namdekano. Gunmen kidnap monarch, wife in Nasarawa. Protest marking the NLC, TUC, and feud. Billion Naira debt, Waek withholds results of candidates. FG to harmonize multiple taxation, says Nami. And uh, FG withdraws contempt, contempt charge against NLC and TUC. Okay, which story are we starting with the Vanguard? 
let's see. <coughs> Anybody has? Look, let me start with Nnamdi Kano. So the leader of IPOB, Maz Nnamdi Kano, yesterday said on Monday sits at home that all the Monday sits at home in the southeast is dead and buried. Kano urged the people of the southeast to welcome the cancellation of the sit at home order. He was speaking through his council, um, if I in age of four. He charged residents of the southeast to reject those using his name to dupe people. Although it was IPOP that initiated the sit at home order to push for Kano's release, the initiative was hijacked, according to him, uh, by criminal elements using the measure to cause havoc. In a bid to find a lasting solution to the first sit at home, Kano cancelled the initiative and replaced it with the Economic Empowerment Day, that's EED. So now we'll see who is really in charge. Is it the guy in Finland? Is it Epa Samanekwa? <laughs> or Kano, who is uh, behind bars? We'll, on only time will tell. Any other story in um, Vanguard? Yes, there's been a crisis in um, Oyo State. The NLC, the, um, there's been a standoff between Governor Makideo for Oyo State. The NLC and TUC have decided to step in to end the feud. The governor has addressed the workers, finally, because that was what they were insisting they wanted. The governor addressed the workers at the Secretariat and assured them it would place priority on their welfare. He also ensured that he, he said he ac acknowledges the misunderstanding in the payment structure that occurred between both of them. And he is willing to make, make do on their demands. So they are going to be, the demands remain worker salary deductions that were made from 2021 <coughs> and 2022, and promotion letter and release of their leave bonuses. So he explain that he has engaged NU, um, N, um, TUC and NLC. And if there is anything that he has done, you know, in this state, he was, of course, he apologized. And then he's also reiterating his commitment to the, the workers in the state. And at least for now, they are no longer blocking off the state's government, um, state's house and blocking. And, and they are no longer the same people from being able to work. We're hoping that activities would return back to um, all your states in full jail. Okay, any other story? Okay, moving on to the Nigerian Tribune. Let's find a story of not taking. Why Senate withheld El Rafai? Two others' confirmation. Electricity, over 7 million customers still on estimated bill in sales report. NAVDAC scales of efforts to eliminate fat linked to heart disease and diabetes in food supply. No plot to impeach deputy governors of Baseki. Emule Jakonde's selfless service on Wulu Oshoba, others task political office holders. An FG moves to end multiple taxation. Nominations open for 2023. Obafemi Aulo leadership prize. Any story there? Nope. Nobody has NAFTAC. I was going to take NAFTAC. Okay, I guess we're done. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. That's all we can take on Front Page Review today. When we return, we want our hot topic of the day. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, Make welcome Pioneer Positive Force member, dancing queen of the 80s, non-conformist, Afrobeat historian in her right, and long-standing member of the multiple award-winning all-female show, Your View, Omoyeni, Yeni, Anipula Kuti, aka Yay! YK Power! Ginger, today, today we'll go here. Hey, hmm. I don't read you. Are you sure? Huh. Hmm. I know I'm not here to answer questions, I'm here to drink. <laughs> We're in trouble today. <laughs> ah. Wait, wait till your age. I was close now. Eh? I said 1975. He said 73. He said, said 75. But that's I wasn't even born to 75. Damn. So will I drink out? Eh? You can drink out. <laughs> take, 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 make I go make I help you. Rush on, rush on, rush on. No be half. I Which half? <laughs> you will make me drink. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. Light in in all. Nepa Nepa Road. Ah! Nepa oh. Road. Nepa Road. <laughs> in Avel Ah <laughs> uh -uh. First of all, my brain cannot uh, memorize everything. A big black bug. A big black dog. Bug. A big black bug. 
Oh, sorry. A bleak. He <laughs> <laughs> <It> don't start. Omo ah, hey, omi omo fella, omi omo anikula kpokuti. Ono pe kini kekele. It's my other song. It's not my other song. Eh, eh. Ikechuku Sunday Okonkwo aka Cross. Are your intro without you? Wow. So there's a name that thing that's. I'm just drinking because you say I should drink. There's no particular answer. You think it's only that can be wicked? What's the answer? Sort of huge. Eh? Yeah. They claim you did, but you said it just happened. That and it's called what again? Sort of huge. Sort of huge. S U B T E R F U G. So you look me finish from head to toe. You look at a person who go know what to be called hustle. Thanks for staying with us. Join us on the show at this sponsored segment is the chairman of GTEx Holdings, Dr. Stephen Akintayo. He will be speaking on his project of raising $100 million for green smart homes in Africa through digital cooperative model. You're welcome, sir. Hey, thank you. How are you doing today? Very well. So cooperatives are a concept that is almost as old as saving. What is different about your digital cooperative model? Well, um, I mean, it's still the old model. The only difference is the fact that you are leveraging on technology uh, to be able to, of course, moderate your meetings. In the old model, you have to physically come together to meet. Uh, in digital model, people can be anywhere in the world, just the same way I'm here in Maldives and I'm connecting with you here in Lagos. So um, that also helped in such a way that we can then bring the whole of Africa together. You can have people be part of the cooperative from different parts of the 54 African nations and can raise revenue to be able to develop Africa. Of course, we know how important that is. Yeah. yeah. So we have seen um, several cooperatives come and go so several investment schemes come and go. How are you um, setting GVEST apart and how are you reassuring investors that if they put their money in this investment, they would definitely get their money back? Beautiful. So GVEST is not new. Uh, it's something we currently run in our Nigerian operation. And um, we've never defaulted on return on investment for a cooperative member. Plus, the concept we use is called fractional real estate ownership. So in other words, they own a fraction of that property, right? And if anything goes wrong, they still have the property that has been acquired. And, and so that has helped for transparency and trust. And, and for me, I, I think that using cooperative model helps uh, a lot of people who probably will have been cut off from being able to have access to real estate investment, either in terms of ownership or in terms of being able to get return on investment. For you to buy one house on your own will probably cost you $100,000 and above. Now it means that with a digital cooperative and fractional real estate ownership, even with $5,000, $10,000, I can own uh, a fraction of that particular house. And when tenants rent that house and they pay rent, I can also get a fraction of the rental income that is coming in. So being able to come up with this, we're, we're hoping to, to launch this in October. I've been doing a lot of African tour uh, of my book, um, you know, and the Billionaire Habits series across Africa. And mm -hmm. what I noticed is that Africa is right. Uh, one is that the brand, particularly my own personal brand, apparently have grown big in those African countries. Uh, we're planning to host maybe 30 people in Cameroon an entire theater had to be used because it was huge population. I already have mentees. One of the guys I met, you know, is running a two million dollar construction project, and happened to say he learned all that from me. So what we noticed <laughs> that unconsciously, with mm. all the teachings I've been doing, 
we have indirectly mentored so many people across Africa. And they are the ones that are saying, you have to come invest in Uganda. You have to invest in Ghana. And we're hoping that we come together as Africans and begin to start those investments. Right. Okay. So, um, $100 million. <laughs> That's a lot of money. And are you sure yeah. that investors are willing to be part of this now? You know, there's a lot of comments going on. And also, what are the kind of investors you believe would buy into this project? What are the investors you are looking for? Beautiful. So, yes, um, $100 million is a lot. But the truth is that for us to do what we need to do, you need tangible income to be able to do that. Uh, however, the good news is the fact that we already have people in these countries who are willing to become investors. Um, many are ready to do JV, they already own lands and they're just waiting for us to come do construction. Some don't own land but they want to invest. And so that already exists. Now if you also look at the diaspora remittance in Africa, Nigeria alone does over $20 billion in remittance. Now we're talking of 54 African countries, right, that are coming together. The number of income from diaspora alone can be less than $100 billion every year. And we're trying to raise this money between the next five to 10 years. So you have that long, you know, tenor to raise the entire uh, $100 million. So definitely it's possible. But again, it will be on the part of Africans to choose to do that. Because what happened when I started to talk, people are saying, you have invested in Dubai, we control over 100 properties in Dubai. You've invested in US and UK. You didn't invest in any other African country outside Nigeria, which is where you come from. And for me, one of the things I kept saying is, if we're united, I would love to invest. Why not invest? But the people themselves have to be interested and they have to invest their money in those countries as well. So for me, is rather than just saying GTEx alone, we move our money into Ghana and start doing development. No, let Ghanaians themselves be part of this cooperative. Mm. We, you know, GTEx brings some part of the money. The people locally bring some part of the money and those in diaspora as well. And then we build um, those, those houses. At the end of the day, what that will also prevent is a situation where, as you know, in Africa, a government doesn't like your face and then they kick you out, right? Because it will have been an investment for Africans by Africans mm. and the citizens' resources is involved as well. Yes, please, could you also tell us about the recent Forbes Best Africa Leading Investment Coach and Real Estate Mogul Award? What does it mean to you? Well, it's humbling. Um, you know, for me, is uh, I keep asking myself, this is a company we started 15 years ago with just 1,000 Naira and to, to be invited to yes. London to yes. receive a, a Forbes Award is really something <laughs> humbling. And for me, it's, it's, it's a proof that dreams come true because a lot of these things are things you'd never believe can happen to somebody without political connection or somebody from a rich family. Uh, but I'm encouraged and it's part of even the reasons why we're saying, hey, let's, because this is an African award, even though it's given by Forbes, it's time to also look inwards into what more can we do in Africa beyond just Nigeria that I'm from. Um, we need to develop Africa and we can develop Africa. And I'm looking forward to the next chapter. That, um, you've been on a book tour. So can you tell us which particular book is the focus of this tour? Okay, so the tour, um, I authored um, Billionaire Habits. I've been to your studio, you know, to review that. And then followed by Billionaire Quotes after Billionaire Habits. Then this year we, we did three um, where that focuses on industry. So we had Billionaire Habits for Entrepreneurs. And then we had Billionaire Habits for Pastors. And then we had Billionaire Land Banker for those who are into real estate. And so we decided to do a tour of the entire five books. So we, are, we were in Ghana, Cameroon, um, Zambia, uh, Kenya, and then the first leg of the tour two months ago. And then this current leg of the tour, uh, we had um, Uganda, Kenya again, um, uh, Mauritius, Rwanda, 
and then um, South Africa will come next. Mm. Right. Okay. So, um, of course, we're in a new administration in Nigeria, and there's expectation yes. that there will be new economic policies, the ones we've seen so far with the subsidy and floating of the Naira. Um, do you consider these policies favorable for the real estate sector in Nigeria? <laughs> well, it's a tough one. Um, however, um, for me, is that it's been an issue for us in the sector to have two exchange rates. Um, it doesn't work. Um, you have the black market, you have the CBN, and then there were some people enjoying the CBN rates. Some of us were not enjoying that. And so being able to make everything one, I think is, is something good. Um, of course, government has a long way to go in terms of the palliatives that need to come in to cushion the effects of that. Um, one of the things I, I wrote a piece on my uh, page, I expected government to have announced the new minimum wage, even if it's going to take effect months from the dates announced. You can say, okay, it's taking effect from October, but let's know the new minimum wage. And I think it shouldn't be less than 200,000. And I think there can be difference between what state government and federal government is giving. State government can say, we'll give 100,000 minimum wage, let the federal give 200,000. Uh, it's also important to look at, you know, buses, you know, we're in the renewable space, uh, buses that use CNG, um, because, again, these are better for the climate. Um, buses that use solar, um, by now we should be thinking of hundreds of thousands of, you know, the bus and, and, and vehicles that can make um, transportation a lot easier. Um, so I think in the area of the palliative, the rollout is slow. And there's so much that can be done. Um, it's not just releasing grains. There's so much creativity that can come into that angle. But yes, okay. um, subsidy has to go. Uh, um, and of course, the, the NERA policy, NERA dollar policy is a good one. But, you know, the implementation uh, needs to be done properly. Okay, so, I mean, you've just led us talking about palliatives. I would say that what is GTEx going to do for... Um, its clients to cushion the effects of all these policy changes? <laughs> well, 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 I think that question should be to government. What we have rolled out to do as a company is a more flexible payment plan for our estates that we've already launched. Uh, so prior to now, you know, we only do um, zero to three months payment plan. Now we've launched 12 months. Uh, for our housing, we only do 12 months for those buying uh, houses for us and their pay installment. Now we've learned 36 months um, for people to be able to pay for houses with us. And we're partnering with mortgage banks so that they don't have to pay the entire 100%. So uh, those are areas that we have control. Um, of course, others has to then be the government themselves. I remind you, GTEx does not operate just in Nigeria. So there is no cry, um, dollar or um, subsidy issue in Dubai that will operate or in UK or in US. Of course, there's a high cost of living crisis in the UK. Um, you also have inflation in the US. But um, we're, I, I think that is not affecting those markets. And next year, we're doing heavy, if I were, we're, raising, we're setting up a fund, a $200 million fund in the US for massive expansion in the U.S. market um, because, again, we realize that only 8% of Africans own properties in the U.S., for example. That is not good enough. 8% of Africans, whether they're Africans in diaspora, whether they're African-Americans. And so the, the inequality in housing is ridiculous. And so we're hoping that we can get in and then make sure we have structures that is more friendly. For example, if you've ever been jailed in the US, you've ever mm -hmm. gone to prison, you're not elig eligible to certain mortgages 
and a lot of black people have had to go to jail in, in, in the US. Uh, if your credit you know, line is below certain point, you are not entitled to be able to get certain mortgage. And you and I know that compared to whites, who are third generation, fourth generation, middle class and upper middle class, most black people are third generation, lower class, right? So you can't guarantee that they will have the right credit line. So we're, we're hoping to do that in next year in the U.S. It's going to be a great one we're looking forward to. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Stephen Akintara, for sharing your, um, your view concerning the GTEx Hotel. We wish you the best uh, as you move forward. Thank you. Okay, so we're speaking Thank with the chairman so of GTEx Holdings, Dr. Stephen Akintara. Let's go on a break now. When we come back, we we'll continue with the show. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show, La General, the one and only Pere Egui. Which of the following is false about teeth? Read, read we are born with 20 primary teeth. Hmm. Teeth are the hardest substance in the body. Teeth are the strongest bones in the body. Teeth is not a bone, actually. Teeth, uh, teeth uh, can self-repair. The strongest bone in the body. No, teeth is not a bone. Final answer. Teeth is not a bone. <laughs> you know what came to my head now? That sound. Me, 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 crickets. <laughs> So, editor, you can put that cricket sound there. It's very just, it's, you can still put it down too. When was the first Gould Ultimate Search? Editor? Don't put any cricket sound. I'm talking, I'm talking. Okay, pair. How many times has Ghana qualified for the World Cup? <laughs> Five times. Hey, you can't do that now. <laughs> That's what it is. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> Why are you like this? Uh, yeah. This is your team. Small, small play yeah, now. They, they, they will not Somebody be cannot play with you again. They will not be impressed though. The team that you're supporting. And Ghana, Ghana will be alright. Yeah. That's Charlie? Last. Cheers, Charlie. <laughs> Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas, it shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw earthen material slapped, stroked and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move weigh in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known. For when the wailing stops, the pieces settle down in abject beauty erected for a century of a century. Speaking. Advocating. Thanks for staying with us. So the Senate was quite rowdy yesterday. I mean, this whole week has been about the screening and screening and screening, all sorts of drama. You know when they started, it kind of started slow. And we all, we all criticized how like a decibel they, they, they seem to have come across. But since that first one, bum, 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 the Senate have been giving it to us back to back. So, the Senate was in a very rowdy session over a motion seeking to step down the screening of uh, Mr. Festus Kayamu SAN as the ministerial nominee, according to one of the lawmakers um, representing Abia Central, that's Mr. Dalentin Nwo Kocha. He said that Kayamu ignored the summon of the parliament back in 2020 over the employment of um, 774,000 Nigerians recruited for the special public works program, if you recall, I think it was 20,000 Naira. We took that story the back then. It was supposed to be 20,000 Naira to be given to 1,000 people per local government. And there was issue of the disbursement. You know, there was, um, I think it was 52 billion Naira that was approved by the National Assembly. And there were issues concerning the disbursement because people were saying that I didn't get with the girls, others did not get. There was a lot of drama. And then the National Assembly has summoned him. Tell us what happened. Oga refused to show up. 
he did not acknowledge their summon. And um, of course, um, the lawmaker, the senator, um, Darlington was waiting for it. It was like he wrecked for him, like he <laughs> wrecked, <laughs> waited, like, okay, now you are coming. Because he came in, I mean, if you guys, for, for those of you who have watched it, he came in, he took a bow, right, left, you know, I'm very confident. The and then you know how they give you opportunities to do the intro. <laughs> oh my goodness, he was really smart. He really gave the intro of how he, by himself, took the federal government to court concerning the, the importance of ensuring that the military were able to be confirmed by the Senate before becoming ministerial ministers. So he, is, he was the one that took that match. So, so I was saying that I was the one, what you're enjoying today, the power you're enjoying today. Mm -hmm. I was one of those that ensured, I went to the, I took the government to court, you know, to let them know how important it is. Unfortunately, they were just watching him finish. <laughs> <laughs> when he now finished, of course, uh, Senator Dalentine took uh, went, went for him. But listen, these are the issues. You were once a minister, right? And you had a task to do. And the budget that was approved by the National Assembly was allocated. Your job was supposed, because they have oversight functions. That's, that's their constitutional right to oversight and look, what you're, look at what you're doing. But they called him, he never showed up. Now, should somebody like that be also recommended, be nominated to be a minister? That's one. Secondly, um, do you think, because eventually he apologized, do you think it was necessary for him to apologize or there was no need for him to apologize? What, um, what, what exactly are we apologizing for? Is he apologizing for the fact that he did not recognize or respect the Senate enough to answer when they called him to defend how he spent the Possibly, money? Possibly, yeah. And all shades of wrong. So first, Fesas Kiamo is a very, very controversial person. <laughs> um, not that he's a bad person, not that he's not an effective, um, efficient. efficient person, but he's a controversial person. <coughs> Before they nominated him, everybody was like, ah, are they really not going to nominate Fessus Kiamo? They nominated him, and I'm like, really, they nominated him? How could they nominate him? So, whichever way, Fessus Kiamo represents a lot of controversy for this administration and this government. And he had that baggage coming in. Beforehand, he would have done what Wiki did, write a letter up front. He's a son, for God's sake. You know that they were going to come to you with what you did. You have written a letter up front explaining why you didn't show up and how the money was spent so that that question would be irrelevant at that platform. He didn't take advantage of that. Also, well, the ABC did... administration, he felt that these are my people. These are my... He kept telling us he's my friend, my former boss, my guy, my, you know, my colleagues. He was just mm. reminding them that we are, we are together in this. So he didn't expect them to be coming at him like that. So I, I feel like, one, it was wrong. I think it was C-finish. There was a C-finish between... Um, um, the nominee, Festus Kiyamo San, and the, Nas mm. the National Assembly. The C finish happened from last administration, mm. which is why they would invite you and you will not show up. Who are you? You are a human being. You are a citizen. The Senate represents us. Mm -hmm. I still want to know what happened with the money. I want to know how the money was spent. And they summoned you and you did not show up. For whatever reason, I take it personal as a Nigerian, a C finish of my representative and of me. So before you get to know me, to, to represent me again as a minister, I would love to be sure you truly will respect all of us as Nigerians. And I don't see things that will resolve that issue appropriately. I feel like there's, this, there's still a lot of political resolution of uh, an issue that should have been dealt with on an ethical level. So what is your KPI? Mm -hmm. Deal with the issue, not political resolution. What we have now is like we use uh, cellotape. Over patch something. We're not, we have not resolved this issue at all. This thing might still happen. And when we don't go through issues properly, we will keep on facing well, he has that apologized. same challenge. Let me come to Mariam. Your thoughts. Yeah. He apologized. I mean, he's apologized. And then to, because of what we've seen, the precedents that they have laid out with the other nominees, where a lot of people were called, when they were called, they were told to just bow, bow and, and leave, you know, bow and go. Our dear friend. Yes, yeah. you know. So. Tampara. We have some governors that, at the time that they left office, the citizens were praying to God to finally answer their prayers. We have um, the new administration saying that former governors have done this or done that. We have um, a, a senator now that had gone on TV to accuse some senators of, or allege that some of them, when they were leaving, took things away. I have not seen any questioning based on those accusations or allegations. And... Um, to put Keamu on that stance, it's, for me, it's like, why the 
the okay. double, mm, you know, what, you. what is happening here. Double I believe that the, everyone should be asked exactly mm. of what they have done before now. If there are any issues or allegations or accusations that are out there, they should have been made to address it. But why were those ones asked to bow and leave and uh, this particular person that's a fantastic asked to point. answer it? So because, I don't get that. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a fantastic point. I didn't, even, I didn't even notice that because it seems like it was a personal issue because you disrespected us for putting you on the spot. The other guys, it was the people they were having, remember the former government of Matawele, people were complaining that yeah. he carried everything from the state house. Yes. You don't know how true these things are, but the people, you saw videos. Of them. So, yeah. so there were questions to be answered <laughs> for those ones, but they allowed them to go. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts, Zamala? Yeah, I think he actually addressed that issue briefly during the screening because he said that all the people that received the stipend uh, were paid directly from the CBA, that he had no contact with the money and the agency that was in charge of that program so had no contact with the money and there were proofs to show that they actually received the money. However, what I am concerned about is this apology of a thing. We need to start holding our um, leaders accountable. We need to understand that it, um, appointing someone to lead a ministry goes beyond their CV, their paper qualifications. It also has to do with their character do they have the soft skills to be a leader? Can, do they have interpersonal skills, communication skills? Because you can be the most brilliant boss in the room and your subordinates think that you are very bad. Let me not use the word in my head. And then when you have a bad character and then you cannot motivate your subordinates to deliver, then the uh, success of that organization that you lead would not yeah it, it's questionable it will not reach its uh, potential goal so uh, as we are nominating um, these uh, ministers it is important to check their characters because when you're looking for a job you know there are referees people ask for uh, references let, let us go and check if this person has a good <laughs> behavior to be able to thank you for taking me there damola because yes. so we need to check properly. And also, these um, nominees should not just apologize because they got caught. Because I do not want to believe that it is now that they are realizing that they stepped out of the line. They must have known, but they did not just care. But now they know what is at stake. Now that's why they are apologizing. It's fine if they are pardoned, but they should also work on their deeply rooted behavioral issues. Yeah. You know, yeah. so that we are we have more confidence we can, I, like, I like what you said that, that those issues are something that we all have to deal with when, when we have to lead mm -hmm. because these are public issues with arrogance they felt like what, why, why are they calling me and we could talk about something which was important it's like we often forget that those people yeah, in the National friends. Assembly they are representing us yeah. it's like you're talking to me yeah. so if there's if they, if someone you and you don't show up you're telling Nigerians I don't send you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, I think that's one thing we need to we highlight. Before we move on, I want to say something that Mariam uh, mentioned, and it is extremely important. And why I say it is important is because people would respect you when you carry yourself as a respectable person. And we need our senators because now they are seeing how important it is and how their carriage is disrespecting their portfolio. Mm -hmm. the, the things, people, would, people have said things that are nasty about them, negative comments about them, that when they explain why they said it, even you will understand why they said it, the behavior of our senators reflects on their position. And their position is too important for them to play with. Also, if you want to be respected, you will, the, the way you talk, the way you, um, the standard you consist, they are consistent with your standard. So Mayam said that for some people, they said bow and go. For some people, they did not allow them answer any allegation. For some people, it was a case of, we know you, it's okay, mm -hmm. it's okay, it's okay. So if you are that kind of person, why would I respect you? You haven't earned my respect. Yeah. Because I can see that there's no consistency to your person. There's the, the character consistency is not there. At the Senate's first screening was <laughs> very, very poor. All of us came here and we're shouting that, no. This is not what we expect from you as senators. No, you can't do this. So imagine if somebody is watching all of that, you are seeing that flip-flop, then you are expecting me to respect you. I have seen you finish now, so I might okay. not be able to. So we are begging senators that going forward, we have the handbook. We must have a system on how we do screening that is consistent for everybody Body. going yeah. forward so that there will be no case of disrespect to that position Talk, going forward. Talking about um, behavior, even yesterday after the senator from Abia raised that motion,
there was a lot of rowdiness. And the Senate president kept hitting the gavel, trying to get them to calm down. They didn't listen to him. Senators, distinguished senators. They didn't answer him. And I was thinking to myself, hey, guys, going on here? he had to stand up. And according to the rule book, once he stands, everybody must be seated. But and really, he didn't need to, eventually they all sat down when he, when he stood up. But he shouldn't need to get to that level. Ah. He kept hitting the gavel repeatedly. They didn't answer him. Respect yourself. Because they just, you everybody was divided him. on, yeah, we, cause so eventually, the minority leader, that's a... Uh, <clears throat> And it's okay when Daily now moved the motion that you know what, let's have an executive meeting, let's move away from here, send out the media guys, let's have a private meeting where we can discuss this issue. But while the majority leader, yes, and um, so I was going to say something now. So eventually, while they were having that meeting, the Senate president, the majority leader, that, and a few others went to the villa. Mm -hmm. to go and discuss this matter. We don't know what they're supposed to have. <laughs> they this, we're supposed to have three, three tiers of government. The executive, balanced and checked by the legislature. Both now being over, um, checked by the um, judiciary. If we are seeing, obviously, that the legislature is being, dep is depending mm -hmm. On approval from oh, executive, executive. Mm -hmm. that the policy and stands of the assembly changed after a meeting. No, with the that's not. No, look at that way. No, 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 no. no, no, no. Let me explain to you. Kilano, I'm not let, wait, we saw. Wait, let me explain to you. A controversial. Let me explain to you <coughs> what it came across as to me. My own interpretation. <coughs> mm -hmm. You are the president. Mm -hmm. You nominated Damola amongst others. Mm -hmm. I am the Senate president. <coughs> I trust you that you chose Damola for a good reason. And I would like to believe that I have these issues against Damola, but because I know that you mean well and there's a, you're trying to achieve something, I will go back to you to find out, okay, why did you pick Damala? What's the issue with Damala? These are the issues people have said about how. Are you sure you want this person? So the, from him going, leaving the uh, plenary to go and see the president, it's not, to, it's not to assume that he's going to go and ask for approval. Yeah. It's more to get clarity on why I did can you see nominate that Damala? I no, see. How would you assume it's to get approval? You might be friends with each other but you are occupying two different roles. Yeah. Your job is to checkmate her. You cannot afford to be seeking information from the person you're meant to checkmate. Yeah. You know why I'm saying that? Because we've sat, we, we, we have two different roles. I remember when I started, when I was working full-time here, Amraya was Deputy Director of Programs, that Amraya is my friend. Amraya needs to query me, and she will tell me I'm sending you a query. Because even though we are friends, there is a difference between our friendship, our trust, and the role I'm occupying as your boss or as the one checkmating you, even though I know you, I trust you that you had a reason for nominating this person, I'll still do my job on bias. I'll come and call you later and say, oh God, don't be so, it's just that we need to still do this, our job as it is. So maybe that's but what the he way did. it is right you now. Know, that's that's what he We're not in the room with them. Exactly. We follow him into the room. But we know this that. Is, well, you know how I feel about politics. Yes. You know they have different um, systems, different principles for different people and different um, mm. scenarios. I um, understand what Tokwa is saying. Yes, we really need to have almost like a, um, like a separation so that you know, there's able to be checks and balances. But also, we need to also have collaborations because we have had situations where the exec the, we know that the legislature is just waiting for the executive. So any policy that they pass, anything, they sabotage it. We also do not want that. But we hope the executive, legislature, judiciary, no matter you know, what... Um, arm of government you are, that you understand that the interest that comes first is that of Nigerians. So if that conversation was really, and I would like to believe that, as Mariah, his antecedents, we've seen what he's done, and he has also been quite rude, has not even answered our summons um, before. This is not someone that carries himself like, you know, uh, a person that will want to be minister. Why have you picked him? And if he's also able to explain to them on the reasons why he picked him, that they feel puts Nigeria first, yeah. then so I'm down with it. So but you know as Nigerians will question what are those things that were discussed that made you people agree that he can't We gotta go on a break. Mm -hmm. I know that we choose forward. to believe that they just did Padi Padi and it might not be Padi Padi. Let's go on a break. <laughs> when we come back we get a few calls and sweet stay with us we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Mr. 7 of 7, let's see into my hands tonight on the social experiments called the 7 of 7. It's Owen G. What is the name 
or what was the name? You see, I don't. I want to make them better now. Rock heart. No, of That's the dope. of the goats when they brought it on stage. The what? name of that goat. Yeah. We should, go, uh, we should go there. No, no, that one, that one easy now. Mm -hmm. I'm just drinking this so that I can ask him my own questions. It's not because of Buga. He didn't get it. You, you know, you, you know. Okay. Mention ten female stand-up comedians in Nigeria. See, just mention their stage name. If you annoy me, you will mention their real names and the year they started. And if you annoy me further, you mention names of their husband, the names of their children. Try me now. Okay, okay. mention their name. No, no, let's, let's, name. let's just... Mm. Uh, no, wait. No, no, no. no. Even name, real name, stage name, husband name, children name. Ten yeah, of them. Even the ten. That's a lot. Eh? That's a lot. Did I cut your question for you? Yes. When you were happy now, now. Elelele Bugana with your arms back. Elelele Bugana. You are wasting time. We don't have time. See, my brother, hmm? before we go on the commercial break, yeah, you are stubborn. And I told you since. The fact that you play this your hair does not mean. You understand? See this bad hair you are looking at? It's a, experience. I've suffered before you. By China. Were you there during the military era of a bachelor and a babangi? You know what happened? I be so, that by China, I call for I will remove four out of ten. That's like. Four out of ten, they pass it. Come huh? drink this thing. Where booby you are on here. Drink it! If I land you. <laughs> Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas, it shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw earthen material slapped, stroked and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move way in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known, for when the wailing stops, the pieces settle down in abject beauty erected for a century of a century. Speaking, advocating, protesting as the arts are meant to be. Ladies and gentlemen, our producer, ambassador of Edo people, we have Etinosa Idemudia in the building! <laughs> now, before you go to the police station, they win the case. Is so, she? you don't, you are showing no, yourself. I go, I go see that's my second you question. You are feeling like a, a counter, the prancing peacock. I'm about to cut your wings. Hello? Now, in the amalgamation of 1914, who was the woman who that. said, who drew the line of the amalgamation? Yes. They, who, who, cut, who cut the report? Who is the best that used to use What is his name? That woman. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> ah, ah. Yeah, you have done me, Jerry. I've marked your face. I've marked your face if anything happened to me today. I don't, I don't if I don't reach my house. Anyway, I'm going to be chauffeured, so... Mm. You remember now, Avi? <laughs> yeah, but you never took the name. Now you remember. Hey! If a person who indulges habitually in watching a sexual material is called a voyeur, that's what they're called. Let's <laughs> say you don't go even get the yeah. next one. Hey, hey, a voyeur. A voyeur. Then go on. It's cool. What is a person who makes one? A call? voyeur. <laughs> a voyage. A bon voyage. So, happens behind the curtains of a man's mind. Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of
Thanks for staying with us. We're still discussing the ministerial nominee screening, the one that took place yesterday especially. Uh, I'm told we have Yakub on the phone. Good morning, Yakub. Thanks for calling. Oh. oh, I'm so sorry. He's been holding for a minute. Let's take a few comments on social media and Um, see what people are saying concerning this but I mean it was at least I'm, ha I'm happy that the Senate seemed to come across eventually as more critical mm. although it might, might come across a bit as personal, personal but mm. you know at least in some cases they asked the right questions I, I saw a few also yesterday but um, let's take a few comments on social media and then see what people are saying concerning the screening that happened yesterday Talk, you have any? yeah um Oh, okay. I'm not. I'm not saying. So while you're looking about for that, let's talk about the fact that there are three people mm. who are still, I'm told, that are yet to be confirmed. So uh, I'm told that um, former governor of um, El Rufai, Kaduna El Rufai, mm -hmm. uh, we have Dan Ladi and Okotete, Stella Okotete. Those are three people that they're waiting to um, to very to actually confirm. Um, the Senate failed to confirm the nomination of these people. Um, after its seven days of screening of the 49 ministerial nominees, um, all, I'm trying to see the reason why they gave. They haven't given. No, they haven't have not given, collected yeah. all their, mm, the, their data. Se so, so is it security um, clearance? I yes, think is what they're uh, waiting for. But you know, with the um, headline, it's almost like we, we did not we them. did not agree for these ones. And of course, I had to read you know the body of that text because I mean. Everyone here, most people were quite impressed with um, um, Nasser uh, Malam Erufai and how he presented, presented himself himself. at the screening. And Okotete also were quite excited because she's female, young, and she seemed quite vibrant and she had quite a good yeah. CV as well. So I guess it's just the security screening and that may take a while. But because he's Malam Erufai, I thought we know him. <laughs> yeah. mm. Well, you know, let's talk about the... What, what is it? Go ahead, please. Yeah, I was, I was just going to uh, talk about uh, Mr. KMO's um, tweets. You know, when he got nominated, he tweeted... Yeah. Who's that? As, um, Mr. KMO. KMO, Mr. Okay. KMO. Yeah, he tweeted and said he's a miracle walking. I saw that. <laughs> it was type singing. So I, I'm guessing that um, he... First of all, I asked myself, like... This kind of um, celebration, are you really there? Are you excited that you've been nominated to go and serve? Or you're excited that, okay, this is a forever meal ticket? Uh, uh, Nigerians be optimistic for a second <laughs> Yes, now. but what then... Be, be but the then, worst of the situation? Number two, number two, he, the way he um, celebrated, it was as though that there were already uh, conspiracies before then, before his nomination, that didn't want him to get on board. So he said it, of course, there were. He said it like that, like that he thought that he had given up yeah. on the possibility of being nominated. Like was actually, he and his family were traveling. They were going out already. But once he got the message, he had to cancel his trip. People were that. trolling him on social media. They were yabby, they were making for the new Yeah, so I guess that's why he... MJ, let's call. I'll come okay. to you. Okay. <laughs> the, took it from Magodo. Thanks for calling. You're live. It's okay. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Hi, uh, yes, I'm talking about last week, and I really want to express my gratitude to everyone. My friend tagged me on your social media handle. Oh, it's okay. We've been looking for you. Yes. Oh, my goodness. You're oh, okay. On, yes. Oh, fantastic. On Facebook and on YouTube. I'm, I'm grateful for everybody trying to reach out. Oh my goodness, I thank am, you for calling back. You've been trying to get your yes. phone number. Please, let, let, just let our producers get your number because so many people have been trying to reach out to you. So many yes. people. On my I messages, tried, it's I, I unbelievable. I've been calling the, 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 the studio, but I've not been lucky. Well, I just tried this morning because a friend of mine mentioned my name on your Facebook yesterday. I hardly so check those I things. Think, oh. Yes. And he tried to mention my name on your uh, YouTube too. And he, he actually came to my house this morning. Oh, fantastic. I'm so glad you called us back. We're not sure. We didn't want to announce because you don't want the whole of Nigeria to become Tokyo overnight. So I'm happy <laughs> yeah. that uh, you, you called. called in again. Thank you so much, Tokyo. It was a fantastic um, um, testimony you shared. And many of us would like to support you the best we can. So I'm happy our producers will have your number and we'll reach out to you. Going back to the matter, what are the lessons we've learned? concerning this last few days, seven days right now, of the screening. Like, it's like what you do will bite you. If you're not careful, everything we say can and be used against you on, on a, in on the a sarcastic Senate. Note, <laughs> on a sarcastic note, I learned that our senators are very, very forgiving. Yeah. yeah. 
I learned that our senators are very, we have very forgiving members that are <laughs> representing us in the House, that if you apologize, they always let things go. No, but so isn't that Nigeria? that Nigerians are very forgiving like no, this? No, Nigerians are very forgiving. But Okay, okay, thank you for bringing that up. It's real. Let's bring, let's bring that. That's a Nigerian factor. We are very forgiving. How much do we need? If could be governor today of government, any state, just fix roads more. Do small uh, exactly. aesthetics for a uh, uh, hospital. Do small aesthetics. classroom. Don't do anything. Right. Just, you know, we'll be happy. We are okay. I mean, Nigerians don't like Wahala. Don't stress. We are very forgiving. Mm. Do something to me. Ah, he is just 16 years old now. Please just forgive him. Let him go. We don't go by the rule, by, by the books. Somebody was saying recently that, um, I think it was a movie I watched. You know, where um, a, a little boy did something, he, his father told him that you're going to pay me back $200 for this thing that you damaged in the house. The boy worked for seven months. Wow. It was a Nigerian father. After you do one or two days' work, okay, you've tried. Yeah, 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 bring it back. Don't worry. You, 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 and you, you, the message, you message and he sends. For this boy, seven months, he worked. His father saw the struggle, he was struggling. It didn't stop him. That's seven months. Pay. To two hundred dollars. Mm. So, we, but we're not like that. Hmm. We're too forgiving. Yeah, we're wait, forgiving. Wait, what you have just said, you have answered many <laughs> life problems. It's true. <laughs> many things. We don't. Why, why we act the way that we do? Um, you're so right. We are. I don't know. Is it forgiving? Uh, and um, we're expected. And also Nigerians as well. You know, we can shout about something one minute, and then after someone comes and apologizes, no, we don't have a system that insists yeah. on you Justice. know, punishment or yeah, prosecution for what done. is done wrong. So we would have heard there's names that we've heard before that how dare those people even show their faces in public space in Nigeria, but they are running for offices, they are being nominated or appointed for different sort of offices. Um, and so that is what, when we talk about corruption or we talk about when we're here talking about a certain situation, we're saying name and shame this person. Is that really we do not want to name and shame mm -hmm. because we're also saying to ourselves that you just never know when you find yourself Dang. in those shoes. Mm -hmm. Someone will use it against you another time if you insist on your right or insist on the truth. But the truth is that story you just mm -hmm. said, if you were doing ourselves, yeah. mm -hmm. in the end, if we are able to put down a system where people who do wrong, like yeah. real wrong, are punished, and that message is sent, we'll have people coming up later, being careful of how they behave, what they say, how they behave in office, what they do with government and people's um, mm. resources. Yeah. But I have another example. I'll come to you, Damon, in a second. I have a caller. Yakub, thanks for calling. Yeah. You're live. Hello. Can you hear me? Very clearly. Go ahead, please. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Mario, for signing this uh, uh, set of Kiyamu, uh, I, I thank God that uh, I let me go give kudos to the image, image that raised the issue yesterday. Uh, that shows that uh, they really, really want to work for Nigerians. Uh, I, like, I like the fact that the senator got up and raised the issue as far back as uh, two years ago. Because that shows that they really, they really want to represent you know, Because even though set up here is my man, I keep loving so much. I like that guy because of uh, his stance concerning the corruption and all that. Because now that the student raised this issue, and then he came back, and then he apologized. And then the apology was taken. But for I didn't think they did not raise that issue. That means that the incoming, incoming minister, they can also do the same thing, but now that's a signal to them that if they make invite you or ask a presentation, they invite you to ask for certain questions for time Nigeria at the end of the you need to answer them because answering them is answering to Nigeria citizens. Yeah. But let me even let me even say this. Why I support you for one thing that you said this morning because uh but uh, for the fact that the students go on the uh, on the closed section and then they went to Mr. President to seek for clarification concerning this more uh specific grammy, that does not necessarily mean that they are on back down because don't forget that both of them they are in the same party and then they know that Mr. President said this thing for them to to, to clarify to, to, to be able to right. clear them, but certain thing is coming up in students. So in, in order for them not to disagree with Mr. President, Thank you very much, Jacob. Let me come to you, Damala. You're going to say something earlier because this issue of um, Padi Padi, you know, you bow and go. Ah, we already know you are a person. It's not just a Senate thing, no. It's a purely Nigerian factor. We all do it in different ways. Do you agree? Yes. A lot of people actually do. 
if I want to talk about myself, yes. even uh, some of my friends know that I do not um, give out um, gigs just because you are my friend. You have to have the competence. You know, I have some friends that have uh, businesses and then they say, oh, Tamala, you haven't patronized me, but you're not showing what I like. Maybe the thing is hanging here and hanging there. And I think uh, a lot of people need to actually um, check their uh, integrity, know what you want, so that when you see what you do not want, you can easily identify. And what I've learned in the course of um, this um, screening exercise is that what I cannot defend to the end, I will not start it, because I do not want to be embarrassed on a national TV. And that's why it's important to um, criticize constructively, yeah. so that when push comes to shove, you can actually stand by it mm. and say, yes, I said this thing, and this, these were the reasons. Because, for example, this uh, Boston Tijani's um, issue, he said all those things out of frustration. His frustration was actually valid. But he's been, he's been made to apologize because of the kind of words he used. He used. Yeah. So it is important to understand you know, the importance of constructive, constructive criticism and be able to stand by what you mean. Let people know you for who you are. Yeah. This is I, have an, I, have, I have an interesting example that's going to indict me and the ladies of your view. Sandra. So this is what happened. <laughs> mm? We Nima loves to greet people happy birthdays. Love. And she started it. And gradually we started getting requests. Everybody said, so my birthday, please your birthday. Everybody would send us messages and we'll be greeting. After a while, our banter became about birthdays. It wasn't about because our viewers loved to hear how did you spend your evening, how did you spend your weekend. But we're now focused on saying happy birthdays because we're getting a lot of requests. Then the company said, Hello, ladies, no more uh, happy birthdays. Just greet maybe your husband. Your wife, I mean, I mean your, your husband, your family, only close family, family will allow you to only greet only your close family for birthdays. No more general fans, everybody greeting. That's the rule. But not the ladies. <laughs> There'll be one friend, one close friend, one close auntie somewhere, one uncle somewhere. They'll send you a message, please, oh, tomorrow is my birthday. They'll now slide it in. It's hey, well, I want an uncle like this. His birthday is tomorrow. Member. You know, it's a family member. <laughs> no, it's not a, you know, the, the, when they say I know, I'm member, telling you. It's mommy, daddy, children. That's, what, that's the rule. We are Africans. But because we are Africans. <laughs> Because someone will send us a message, pay a sis now, tomorrow is my bed now, please let me greet it. It's your cousin, or it's my neighbor's friend, or it's my, somebody that just knows you, will send you a message. And you will break the rule because you want to satisfy. Same thing, bow and go. We are paddy paddy, we are friends. You're my governor, you're governor, we are friends now. No, we're not allowed to. We're supposed to screen you, but you're my friend. Don't worry, just bow and go. It's the same thing. We all do it to each other. So it's easy to say, oh, it's them. But we are all part of the system. We're all Nigerians. That's the truth. Mm. Uh, we're going to wrap up. So bow, bow and go, obviously, we all disagree with it. And we want it completely expunged. Okay. You know, bow and go should be expunged. Nobody should be allowed to bow and go. We could understand what... Um, okay, I'm sorry. Let me hold you for a second. Abraham has been holding for a minute. I'll come back to you. Abraham. Hello, Jack. Thank you. Good yes. morning. You're live. Thank you for this program. I always appreciate you. Thank you, sir. I'm a first caller. Welcome to the show. God bless you. Now, uh, on the case of uh, on the issue of uh, uh, Pastor Kiamo, the issue is that we have to go to the root of the matter. I don't think I have offended anybody. <laughs> Only what? Yes. So we have to put down to the root of that matter. Most of I believe in separation of power and the checks and balances. Because the students represent the grassroots people, they are closer to us, so they are the poorest of the people. But when you are invited on frivolous issues, or when the invitation of the purpose of that invitation is not transparent, we are belong to this country. Kiyama initiated that program and he got some volumes of money. They wanted to invite him, so I follow that matter closely. They wanted to take my, that program for me, and to be Kiyama said no. So everybody has principle. He was not, Kiyama is not a rubber stamp. Minister and I really supported him throughout, and a lot of beautiful Nigerians supported him. He was working with Mali, he was working with cabinet, he was working with APC, he was working with many civilians because in this country, if you are taking a rough step or done something wrong, I think those people should have corrected him. He did this very well. All the allowances, the constant allowances that the senior council were receiving, who did they make a cash for? Have they ever accounted for anybody in this country? Mm. Thank you very much for bringing that angle. Because really, there wouldn't have been need for a closed session if the issues were allowed to be laid out openly. Let us know what happened. Gun, 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 gun. That's what he's just giving us an inkling to possibly what could have and if actually you remember, transpired. I think that issue was about the list, right? Yes. And
Who some, made the list? Whose no, list no, it was? Some senators allegedly were trying to insert some people, people on the list. Mm -hmm. So those kind of conversations, they didn't want us to have it publicly. Mm -hmm. So I say, let's have a closed door session. Mm -hmm. Because we were certain we might be guilty so maybe they were protecting themselves more than that they were <laughs> seeking a rubber stamp from the executive. And, and many people yeah. were of the opinion that that was what that it was. They were, it was a personal vendetta against Festus Kiyamo in the way they addressed him. Mm -hmm. Um, well, he's in their plenary, no? Whichever way, it, whichever way it played out, whenever we do, um, we apologize. Mm -hmm. Even as parents, when we, our children apologize, we always ask, do you know what you're apologizing for? Because yeah. people apologize just because they feel you want to hear an the apology. apology. Mm -hmm. So I will give you what you want to hear so that I can go. But we should always clarify what are we apologizing for. Yeah. Well, in the case there's... of Bosu, he defended what he said, mm -hmm. and the apology was for the language mm -hmm. he used. Mm -hmm. In the case of Kiyamu, he, he also defended that, hey, the, the way the money was disbursed, I was not personally involved. BVN was gotten for every um, person that the money got paid to, and it was a direct bank transfer. Yeah. So what was the apology for? Because I did not show up when you invited me to come or for why also important. I didn't I didn't I, I wasn't sure if that was what yeah. it was however I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. inclined to believe that, that that's the yeah. thing that was left for apology to be made for because what you said is heavy that Nigeria is an apologizing country and we are quick to forgive we don't try cases and I just want to spend if just a just 30 30 seconds to one minute to explain what what the impact is if you go to the hospital and you had a bad experience and rather than taking the doctor to court you accept the apology mm. and you go. go the next patient might suffer worse and the person dies but what you went through if you took the doctor to court without accepting the apology you would apologize accept the apology but still take the doctor to court why so that in future that doesn't happen exactly. again that's why we must yeah. have consequences and we must well, pursue cases till the end. All right. That's all we can take on this segment. <laughs> Finally, people, would people have apologized if they didn't have to face uh, being nominated? I mean, mm. they probably never would have apologized in the first place, but that's all we can take well, on this segment. Lesson, so have we. Everybody has learned that lesson. Let's go on a break. It's Tuesday. It's our Healthy Tuesday. Stay with us. We're going to discuss anthrax. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. In Jesse, <laughs> in the <view. laughs> It's still 707, seven, and we've been doing a whole lot of protesting, protesting. The only thing that remains is just to carry a placard. It's about five or seven, to be honest. Because, ask your question. I have so much to speak about once we finish. We will not give you the time because it's seven of seven. I will make the time now. <laughs> he said he will not ask questions about science. No, 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 was composed by which Kuti? Femi Kuti. Is that your father also? Oh God. I'm Shimon Kuti. No, wait. Wait, Femi Kuti. You said Femi Kuti. Kuti. Wait, wait, wait. You can't be allowed. No, you've not asked me anything. Everyone. You've not asked me anything. We, we, uh, so, my final answer. No. <laughs> All I have to say is yeah. this. Show is really about drinking. Yeah, that's the whole idea. The questions don't matter. <laughs> that's the whole Just idea. Just this is out the window. <laughs> we throw caution to We have no right morals here. here. On the 7 of 7. Yes, that's on that angle. So, like, if I had a very, very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> you wouldn't want to work with who? Not There's no judgment. No, uh, and I respect, oh, judge you I respect but we won't this judge certain you. type of people. But what I dislike so much is when they, they tend to come to work and then they pour all their resentment on them. you. Is it me that offended you? <laughs> I'm not the one. I have no business. Mom, just come out with you, pay me at the end of the month, and let me go back to my house in peace and sleep. 
But when it comes to like divorced people, I cannot work with a divorcee. I can't see myself doing that. If I find out, if you can hide this one, but if I find out, when they are nice divorcees, I would just. What be, if they are nice? Okay, now it depends. If you are nice, cool. But if you are the type that you don't know how to keep your anger to yourself, you always you always pour it on somebody. Well, I'll not drop my resignation letter. No matter the amount you're paying me. So you're <laughs> more passive aggressive people. Yeah, I can't do it. I'm so sorry. Oh, definitely. And I cannot work with stingy people. Ah, see this one. Because you cannot be passing me in the morning after tonight. Thanks for staying with us. As we said, it's our Healthy Tuesday. And our seg on this segment, we'll be discussing anthrax. According to the reports we've had, the federal government has issued an alert over the outbreak of the anthrax disease in some neighboring countries. Joining us to discuss more is a consultant, infectious disease, Lagos University Teaching Hospital, Luth, and also the public relations officer, Nigeria Infectious Diseases Society, Dr. Adefolari Opawoye. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much. Nice being here. Yes, yeah, so when we hear anthrax, we're thinking of animals, but you know, anthrax used to be something was in the envelope, I think, back in the U.S. then when they had issues where it was spread across. But what exactly is anthrax and why should we be scared of it? Well, should, should we be scared should of it? We'd be scared. I, I wouldn't do that. I mean, okay. that's not the aim of uh, trying to uh, set up uh, a, a fear in the, in, the, in the public. Well, anthrax is, is a bacteria, you know, like so many, it's a gram positive bacteria. And, uh, Basically, it uh, lives in the soil. That's where it stays, you know, and it's majorly a disease that affects animals most of the time. So animals do die from anthrax from time to time. But then occasionally, it could transfer from animals to humans, like so many other diseases does, like rabies and co. You know, so it could be it's what we call a zoonotic disease. So, and um, you're talking about the mall attack uh, in mm. um, 2001 in the U.S. That was almost like a terrorist attack. You know, that's a totally abnormal different. situation. Okay. It's All a right. different scenario from what we <coughs> have here. You know, so it's not something we should be scared of. It's something we should know and something we should be wary about because it can affect humans and yes, it can lead to that. Even okay. in humans. So I am a advocate for um, conservation of vultures. And one thing vultures. That I, yes. Uh -huh. wow. <laughs> <laughs> and one thing I know that uh, vultures are described for is that they can feast on animals that ha have been um, infected with anthrax and it does nothing to them. And, you know, so I was thinking, right, that um, does this have anything to do with the fact that we have a decline in these animals that are able to feast on dead animals that are infected by this disease? Because even though you say that it affects animals alone, we have heard that it can be passed on to humans, even sometimes just by being in the vicinity of these animals, or if someone has handled it and the person that handled it gets in contact with someone else, the person is able to get it. Oh, uh, no, 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 really. Yeah, okay, so I agree with you that uh, anthrax basically affects four-footed animals, and of the four-footed animals, uh, basically herbivores. Mm -hmm. So it will affect a dog, for example, or a cat, because they are not majorly herbivores. Oh. They are more like, you know, omnivores, you know. Okay. So, but yes, uh, just four-footed. So, so it's something that, of course, a vulture, it won't affect a vulture. Mm -hmm. You understand? So that, that it stands to reason that if a vulture eats the carrion from anthrax, it's not going to have a problem with it. Mm. I agree with you on that. I'm, I'm, I'm totally... So uh, uh, the, 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 ch the challenge... Sorry, your, your other statement was... What? Which is the transmission of this from yeah, animals so, so to the transmission. Humans. So to be clear about the transmission, uh, it can be transmitted from animals to humans. And majorly it could be from um, maybe, let's say, two or three sources. Uh, it could be when um, humans handle the contaminated hides and skins mm -hmm. from the animals who have died or who have been sick or died from anthrax. Sometimes when they eat raw meat, you understand, of animals, and then if they have contact with their skin, mm -hmm. you understand. So we have three major forms. We have the GI, that's the one that goes into the stomach. We have the inhalational. We know when you inhale the spores, which was the one that happened at the mall attack, but I told you that's a totally uh, not very common. Next and then you have the cutaneous, the one that happens to the skin, which is usually the most common form of it. So it's very important to understand how it's transmitted because that's how we uh, formulate our preventive measures, you understand, so that we don't just panic and then throw away the baby and the bathwater. You get so those are the ways. So, so now uh, for, it's getting from, gotten from animals to humans through that. We yeah. should just stand in the vicinity and no, okay. no, it's not through casual contact. You understand? Okay. That would be through intimate contact with these animals, you know, really handling them, 
And then, like the cutaneous one, for example, you have to really handle them with... So, like, my butcher is at risk. Yeah, the butcher is at risk. You're very correct. Veterinary workers, you understand. Aha. So, uh, but the butcher is at risk if that animal has anthrax. You mm -hmm. understand? So, the whole thing is to check all these things and make sure that the animals don't have anthrax as at the time they are killing them. Right. So, talking about um, checking, how do you think the government can ensure that the livestock farmers and suppliers are sticking to safety requirements as they supply this meat into the markets? Yeah, okay, so, so there's a whole structure in the government, you understand? There's a normal structure. And then in terms of an outbreak now, there's what we call the Public Health Emergency Operations Center, which we have activated, for example, both nationwide and in Lagos State, where you bring in experts from everywhere, you understand? You call it one approach. I'm a member of that committee. We hold meetings like three times a week trying to look at the situation report and what's going on, how many animals do we have now, any human contact, we do contact tracing, surveillance, and there's, there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes, you understand? So what, what the government usually does is that ideally you're supposed to get your meat from approved abattoirs. Mm -hmm. And all these approved abattoirs, they have veterinarians that actually check the meat before they are killed, hmm. you understand? As at, and at the point in which they are killed, you get, there's a quick autopsy, you look, you look at the lungs, make sure, because it's not only attracts you're worried about, you're worried about TB, you yes. worry about so many other things yes. that could pass on from animals to humans. And so you check at that point. And if there's a problem, they, they, they say, no, you can't sell this meat. Mm. You understand? But then, you know, you know our people, you know, people try to do also some, corners. you know, cut corners and all that. And, and then sometimes it's difficult for the farmers. So you just wake up and you have 30, uh, 30, 30 goats in your flock and all of a sudden 20 of them are dead. I mean, it's going to be we difficult. Just throw them to, you know, them so, so, for example, when we were young, then we were trained because we I trained and I raised animals when we were growing up, and then we were trained that when the animal is getting sick before it dies, we quickly put the knife, you know, and kill it, and then you put plenty of pepper, you understand, so that it will kill whatever. <laughs> that, that, that was a whole, and, and, and then you can't do that mm -hmm. because once you do that, now if that animal is getting sick of anthrax, and then there, there could be a risk, you understand. So those are the so issues. So cooking it with hot pepper does not do anything to it. No, no, no. It's no, cooking, no, cooking I mean, helps. No, no, cooking helps. Hear, you know, we think. have an idea that pepper, uh -huh. you know. I mean, in our culture, locally. once something is pepperish or bitter, we believe it works and it's healthy. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah, locally, that's what we think. But cooking anything really helps. Like in our tracks, if you re but, but, but we're saying that it's really dangerous. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because you remember that you can um, get infected by just handling the... Road. So any animal that is sick at this point, you are advised to actually try to report. It, it's difficult, you understand? Mm -hmm. But that's what our farmers are advised to do. So um, knowing that people might not be able to get to where to do the report, what are the basic things like, okay, should they wear gloves? We remember that we're told always the personal hygiene, washing your hands. The fact that I have touched the, this animal that died of anthrax, does that mean that if I quickly wash my hand, maybe use bleach or something, does that ensure I am free? So, so what we actually, I mean, the world is a global village now. So when you say people are not getting close to where they report, I will be worried about that. They have social media, we have channels. You have, you have channels, everybody has their groups. Almost everybody has a WhatsApp group now. The farmers have a WhatsApp group. Yes, the shoemakers have a WhatsApp group. So I mean, the whole idea, and, and really they, they do call us when these things happen. Look, there are a lot of animal deaths going on here. Because what you start seeing in livestock is that they start to die suddenly. Yeah. And then sometimes they start to bleed from the nose, from the mouth. And then sometimes when you kill them, their blood does not clot. All those are signs that look like there's a problem here. Oh. Or you kill them and then before you know it, they decay so fast. That's a problem here. You know, so I mean, they, they do try to because they also are worried. They don't want to get it. Yes. You understand? So usually what we advise is, hey, hey, hey just anything, just, just let, let us come. Because there are things we do. I mean, you wear your protective equipment. There are proced procedures you go through to minimize that transmission. You understand? There's a way you dispose of the carcass of the animals. You understand? Yeah. You are very, very deep. Or you burn on the spot. Or, you know, there's a way you transport. So really, we don't really want to just allow everybody to do that. Because then you cannot guarantee. And then before you know, you may actually have a problem on your hands. Because once it gets to the human population, you're in trouble. Yeah. So when you finally, when a human gets infected. Yeah. You know when we go to Nigerian hospitals, it's always either malaria or, or typhoid. <laughs> you know, it's always difficult to get to the point where there's, there's an infection such as anthrax. It's a and it diagnosis. Yeah. So how do we know? What are the symptoms we need to look out for to know that somebody has anthrax? Or so, 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 so a lot of these things are based on what we call epidemiological linkage. Mm -hmm. So for example, there was a time when if you cough two, three times, they would say, hey, maybe you have COVID. <laughs> you understand? That was a time. Now... It's not there anymore. <laughs> so you get. So what we usually do is to get the alert out. You know. So um, we've had meetings with private hospitals, with government hospitals. Yes, trainings going to be scheduled for them. Like, okay, look, guys, this is anthrax season. Okay, these are the things you look out for. Now, the problem with many of these sicknesses is that they are they are non-specific. You understand? It's not like you have classical signs. You know. You know. For example, you know, anthrax. I told you there are really three different types. You know, the um, GI. That's the stomach. The one that you get when you inhale and then the one from the skin. So the one from the skin is the one everybody will see. 
to something we see all the time. Why is it different now? How are they able to tell that these ones did not die from exhaustion like the ones they've always seen? So, so ideally, again, you see, it's just a problem. You shouldn't just have um, uh, a cattle that dies and then you, 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 you sell that to people. I, I, it's wrong. I don't think the veterinarians... No, no, no. Well, they were not, sorry, they were not saying that they sell, but they're saying what happens is when they... Reach, what happens when, to them? What, what, when they get there and some of them are dead, they just separate them and then sell yeah. off the live ones. And then so, what happens to the dead ones? No, my question now is... Um, hopefully, they're not selling that, but my question is the ones that didn't die may be infected and still would get to the butcher, be cut and, you know, be sold to us. Yeah, well, so I, I, how would you tell that this is not from exhaustion even before symptoms start showing? So, like I said, you should get your meat from approved laboratories. Mm. You understand? And the approved laboratories, honestly, they have a very solid system where officials. And it's for Lagos State. Yeah, for Lagos State. You know, they have that system where they check those animals before they are killed. You understand? And then they make sure they certify them that, okay, this animal is fine. You understand? You can kill this and this is safe for public consumption. But you know the problem is that there are all these middlemen and people like you talk about, and then sometimes they sell this at very cheap prices. So you have a farmer who we have uh, animals dying on his farm. So okay, look, this is a goat, five thousand naira, and then before you know it, so those are, those are the issues that we have to watch out and you have to be careful about at this time. Right. So there are speculations that the anthrax disease emanated from some farmers feeding uh, some wrong things to their animals so that they can boost their rapid growth. What's your take on this? Yeah, farmers feed wrong things to animals a lot of times. Uh, the farmers are the largest consumers of antibiotics that we have in the country. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, you see them sometimes having tetracycline in sacks. Wow. You understand? And they pour it into feed and all that. And, you know, the challenge from that is that by the time humans consume those kind of things, you, you also develop the resistance. Mm -hmm. You understand? So then we give you drugs in yeah. the hospital and then it doesn't work because you're already taking the drugs from the animal somehow. You know, that's another problem. But no, that's not the problem with anthrax. Mm -hmm. Anthrax is from the soil. You understand? So when animals eat, you know, they eat grass and all that, yeah. you know, they develop those spores and then sometimes they do. So it's not something that, it's something that has always been there. It's just all of a sudden now because normally when there's an outbreak, there's increased surveillance and then this kind of things happen. There's, it's brought to public consciousness. But I'm just saying that it's a very ancient disease. And actually what you try to do is to have a vaccination system for the animals to protect them. Okay. Because once you protect the animals, then humans are also protected. Okay. And that's what we're also doing right now in Lagos State. There's a lot of vaccination already going on. Um, almost a thousand animals have already been vaccinated all around, you know, to protect. Uh, and then they, we, we put a mark on the animals because once you vaccinate them, then you shouldn't eat them in the next, like, two months. You know, so you can't kill them there. Then. But the farmers are really cooperative and they were trying to, because they're also trying to keep their flock safe. Yeah. Because when they lose the flock, they, I mean, they lose everything. They lose money. Mm. So um, when you talk about the idea of um, vaccination taking place in Lagos, it sounds interesting, but people watch our show from around, at least all around Nigeria, and we're talking about places where they probably don't have um, certified veterinarians that check on the animals before it is it gets um, butchered, or people that right from within their compound, they have goats to one side, ram to one side, cow, and they just pick one and they kill. What are the other things that we can, people can look out for to be able to identify that there's something wrong with this animal that I'm about to kill, that I'm thinking on normal days just be sick, and let me just quickly... Yeah, so like I've told you, any time that an animal is sick, ideally, you don't know what is wrong with that animal. That animal should not be eating. Mm. But I've told you again, the practice is something we have done. I have also done when we were young, we were mm. trained. Once the animal is doing the neck like this, quickly put knife. Mm -hmm. You understand? And then kill quickly, it, it is wrong. You know, that's the training that we're trying to tell people. Now, but it's a bit difficult for the farmer. You understand? Because of the kind of losses that they will incur. incur. So, yeah, I agree with you. Lagos is quite miles ahead of um, I mean, virtually every state in the country. Because, I mean, we've had quite a few outbreaks here. This is like the epi epicenter, you know, Ebola 2014. It's going to be, I mean, this is like almost the anniversary we're going to be doing very shortly. This yeah. is August. It was around this time, you know, back then. And the good thing, the lucky thing we've had in Lagos is that we've had people, I was there at Ebola. You know, I've been there at last year when the monkeypox COVID. So we had that institutional knowledge. And so when these things happen, we know what to do. We just roll out. Question coming here. So right. Is the doctor saying that all those who move the slaughter at the Amala joints are vaccinated? I think it goes back to mm -hmm. making sure that the, the animals slaughtered in these bookers are gotten, are acquired from the right Because they are not done from... Yeah. Yes. So, so, so the animals are supposed to... They, there should be a central system from the abattoirs where, you know, the veterinarians check them you know, some before they are slaughtered. That's the ideal thing to do. So again, there are this... If I go to a booker and I know they slaughter their meat, they what, what kind of question do I ask them? Where do you, where, which abattoir did you buy this from? Or they just say, they, they, they ordered it from Canada. Like, what, how realistic is it for no, no, me no, as a consumer? Not, to make sure I'm I, eating. I, my question was that, if 
you are not buying this animal from a hey, certified butcher. butcher. Yeah. You kill it by yourself. You said they check some areas. What are the areas I can check that if I see that maybe the liver is black uh, and I know the color of the liver I usually gets before, maybe it's green. I am not good. This animal, there's something wrong. So I'm just asking. Liver is really dark anyway. <laughs> but, <laughs> and in lame man's terms. You don't kill. I don't, I mean, you don't kill animals. <laughs> no, no. I, I mean, so, so what happens? I've told you. So the thing with anthrax and animals is that their uh, disease course is very rapid. They die very mm, fast. Okay. And that's when you know there's a problem. All of a sudden, the animals start to die with a particular farm. Okay. And that's how we knew. Like the case, the, the first case in Nigeria was in Niger State. Mm -hmm. And about eight animals just phew, like that. Mm -hmm. And then once they died, and then you take samples and all that. You know? yeah. So that's the, usually the first time. They get sick and then they die very fast. And I said, when they get sick, they start to bleed. You understand? Oh, I've said okay. that. You understand? Yeah. They start to bleed from the nose and all that. Oh. And then, if by any means you quickly try and kill them fast, you see that their blood does not clot. Yeah. Mm. So, so I guess this okay. Yeah. Those are yeah. 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 things. So an advice would be: let's be careful of frozen meat and meat products mm -hmm. at this time. Yeah. Well, no. I, the, the, we have to be careful. <laughs> the, the, the because we don't know the source. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 the main thing. So hopefully we're going to get to a stage where we bag and tag every source of meat. But we right now we have. No, no, right now I wouldn't say that. I, I would just say that, I mean, whatever you're going to eat as meat, cook it properly. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm going exactly. to say. Exactly. So once you because cook it properly, so that, what does properly mean? You cook it, or that, you know, that, 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 that. <laughs> cook it, <laughs> and fry it, fry it, you, you fry and then put pepper. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. the way we cook things in Europe, we first boil the meat, yeah. and then we fry, and then we put inside or bag again. It's properly cooked. There's a lot of cooking. But I haven't asked, I have not bought meat from my butcher since I heard about the Now, So what have you made? It's not because Fish. I mean, I've been eating fish and other things, Good but fish sellers. <laughs> yes, yeah. but you know, it's not really about the meat itself. I'm wondering if he has anthrax on his body and he, I like, come in contact with him. Yeah, what was the decision period know? for human beings? Well, it, it really varies about sometimes four to five days, sometimes up to okay. 21 days from the contact, you understand, you know, but, but it's not that transmissible from human to human. Okay. Let's be very clear about that. Okay. It's not easily transmitted at all. It's not that contagious. So if I know like my butcher touch. is, he can answer no, no, and talk no, no, to no, me, no. then I know that he's Please fine. continue buying meat from me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, so what you've told us right now, yes, anthrax is, is there in some animals. Lagos State government is working hard to control it, to entrain the butchers, to ensure that those who are those who are buying from the butchers are certified and all that. However, if paraventure, <laughs> perhaps using my pastor's language, we we get to buy any meat, boil it properly. Yeah, Once we up. boil it properly, I think that's we know that's a normal thing for well, us. I, I think generally yeah. we don't take. But also things, don't, yeah. you know, we are not like the medium rare, rare. Yeah, 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 yeah. So don't go to those fancy or in restaurants that they have some medium rare. No, no, no. But, but yeah. most of those guys actually yeah. do have very confirmed <laughs> sources of where they of get the, their own yeah, stuff yeah. from. They yeah. have direct contact with farms and all that. You know, so, so, so some of them. But do we have like a list of? Government certified um, abattoirs. There's a list. Where, where, where can we, like There's a regular a Nigerian, go and check the list? I understand that. There's a list, and then we'll try, I, 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 we'll make sure that that list gets out there so that on people Twitter. can know where to get Because my butter goes to Ijora, that's his own abattoir. For. Yes, there are a lot of Udoyeros in different places, you know, <laughs> ahead, all these places where they, you know, uh, yes. we have a new book. Go ahead. Yeah, so I know that the uh, federal government has been doing a lot, you know, to, you know, distribute vaccines yeah. and also set up um, biosecurity um, yeah. labs and all of that. How would you rate their body language to ensuring that um, this disease does not spread and what more can they do? Well, there's always more to be done. In terms of body language, like I told you, um, uh, uh, um, incident management systems have been activated mm -hmm. and that's what we usually do. We have what we call a public health emergency operations. You understand? Well, of sudden you contact everybody and then you set up teams. And I told you we've had hours and hours of meetings, 20, 30 people from the Ministry of Agriculture, from the Ministry of Health, subject matter experts, infectious diseases, dermatologists, uh, veterinarians, everybody has been coming. No, no. Well, I mean, you see, people, we, we tend to have this fatalistic view of the country. Yeah. And it's just it's like... Fatalistic, say it louder, I didn't hear you. <laughs> yeah, like, fatalistic well, views of some people. You, you that understand, of everything, you know. And then, you know, you remember during COVID, they said all of us, we died. Yeah. They park up, on the yeah. streets, blah, blah, blah. But we arranged ourselves now we because of the, that fear. We were the, no, it wasn't really that, but somehow we're the fourth best response in the world. Because you of fear. Yeah. marked by the WHO. A lot of people were afraid. The way we were <laughs> eating <laughs> garlic and ginger. It's a very issue that went viral that oh there are people on the you know, when the accident happened I think with the train yeah. the boost started going viral I see Nigeria the, you know when we had the triage we had to bring in the and um, the CMD to explain to what what yeah. a triage is that yeah. you put on the to spread you can't bring so, them into so the, the hospital. So the thing is just people I understand how the country is and yeah. the 
the, 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 the most popular thing I used to run away. That's yeah. the truth. But we have a lot of very competent people here. You plan to run anytime soon? <laughs> well, I tell people I'm still here for now, you know. The last time I was here, you asked me the same question. Yeah, <laughs> you to yeah, and I told again. you, and, yeah, and I'm here, and yeah. that was almost five years ago, so I'm still here. You know, so, we, you know, so, so but, but, but we are competent. Yeah. We try From to talking to you, you've sort of calmed my nerves because I thought, ah, things are happening outside. Yeah. Yeah. I was shocked when I saw that we should stop eating Bomo. Chicken? Yes. I don't know why not. It's cooked. Who eats Bomo raw? Oh, you understand? Boy, you boy, this is, you game. Fly. This is no, no. speaking on behalf of anthrax, not speaking on behalf of the leather manufacturing association of Nigeria that huh? is saying that pomo is not good for Nigerians to eat. Yeah, Even no, the way we boil it. No, no, no. Anthrax said this. Let that's me that's show you one for this story. My CEO, the, um, I'm Andrew Hallan of TVC. Yeah. You know, I was so excited when he, when he just came back. I was so excited to let him taste Nigerian food. And he ate the meat. And I was like, oh my God. This meat is overcooked. <laughs> I can't taste the seasoning. I can't take the meat. You know what? When next I come from Ireland, I'll bring you meat. You eat, I'll cook meat for you. Eat, you taste the meat. Now what they're eating is seasoning, about the salt and seasoning. Yes. That's all we cook and over, cook and over, cook. So he felt that it was too hard. It was mm. too That's why anthrax will not kill us. You take away all the nutrients, you cook away everything. Exactly. Then, that was the issue, but it's just a bit safer when we do that, actually. Nice story. Thank you very much, Doctor. <laughs> Thank you, man. Happy that you're still in Nigeria. We hope the next five years we'll see you again in Nigeria. Please don't jump up now. Don't jump up. Don't jump up, please. That's how Nigeria will be better. Like Amen. Amen. That's all we can take on today's show. Hope you learned a few things as we have. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now. Bye.